opens up and hearts open wide as the sky. We lift you high, we lift you high, and hands up and hearts open wide as we cry. God, we lift your name high. Tell him hands up. Come on. And hands up and hearts open wide as the sky. We lift you high. We lift you high. And hands up and hearts open wide as we cry. God, we lift your name high. Tell them, let all the other names, let all the other names fade away. Glory to God. Let all the other names fade away. Until there's only you. Let all the other names fade away. Jesus, Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Tell him, Jesus. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Tell him, Jesus. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Tell him, take his place. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Tell him, hands up. Come on and worship him on this morning, church. And hands up, hearts. Open wide as the sky. We lift you high. We lift you high. And hands up and hearts open wide as we cry. God, we lift your name high. Let all the other names, let all the other names fade away. Glory to God. Let all the other names fade away until there's only you. Come on, tell them, let all the other names. We will stay there for a minute. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Tell them, let all the other names fade away. Come on. Let all the other names fade away. Glory to God. Let all the other names fade away Until there's only you Let all Father God On this morning, me and Pastor Amy We join our faith together With your wonderful people Minister to them Bless them, encourage them Strengthen them Meet every need in their lives, oh God Meet every need need in their lives. Refresh them. Speak to them through the word of God. Bring peace. Bring comfort, God, to that person who's been let down and disappointed, rejected. Let the word of God lift him up. Let the word of God bring hope, bring healing, bring deliverance into their lives. Lift every burden. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Somebody say amen. Good morning to you, saints of the Most High. So good to be back with you again on this morning as we focus these next few broadcasts on God chose you. Glory to God. Can you point your hands at yourself and say, God chose me. <laughs> God don't make no mistakes when he calls somebody, when he chooses them. When he places his hands on their life, there is no mistake in God. The Bible says, as for God, all of his ways are perfect. Let me give you a little background on what's happening here in chapter 15 of 1 Samuel. Saul is confronted by the prophet Samuel because Saul have disobeyed God. And Samuel told him, because you have rejected the word of God. God have rejected you from being king over Israel. And now God has chosen someone else, someone who is better than you. And the kingdom is going to this person. 
You can't play with God. You can't take God for granted. Are you listening to me? There are consequences to be dishonorable to the things of God. This brings us into 1 Samuel chapter 16 as Samuel is weeping and mourning and he's about to get his new orders from the Lord. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 16, 1 through 14, And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Now listen here. God is telling Samuel, quit mourning, quit crying over Saul. I'm done with him. You see, when God makes up his mind, when God is through with somebody, you can't change God. You can't change his mind. You can't force him. You can't twist his arm so you can have your way. And when you see God say, I'm done with something, you might as well forget about it and move on. So Samuel, being the godly prophet that he was, he was interceding on behalf of Saul that, you know, he was believing God for Saul to repent, for, for Saul's heart to be changed. But God gave Samuel inside information. God said, I'm done with this fellow. I'm done with him. Saul, is, he's gone beyond the point of no return. And that's, that's a place you never want to come to. So I want to say this to you tuning into this broadcast. Never take God for granted. Never take the things of God for granted. Never take God's servants for granted. Never take the anointing of God for granted. His presence, his call, the opportunities that he presents to you, do not take it for granted. Are you listening to me? That's the mistake Saul made. And so God gave Samuel inside information. He said, I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Glory to God. David had already been born 16 years prior to this. Now he was at the age of 16, 17 years old. And now Samuel is on his way to go and anoint David. Little that David knew, his day had come. He was used to being faithful to his dad, taking care of the sheep, the whole nine. And now his moment was at hand. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. So Saul was angry now that Samuel gave him the bad news that the kingdom is taken from him and given to another. And Samuel says, look, God, this is a suicide mission. If this man know I'm coming to anoint someone else to be king, if he find out anything about this, he is going to kill me. And the Lord said, take an heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice. This is the part that I like. God said, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. God's got you. Some of you watching this broadcast, you're wondering how to make the next step in your life, how to move forward. What is it that you need to do? Well, I got good news for you. God is saying the same thing to you that he said to Samuel. I will show you what to do. God said, I'm going to show you what to do. I'll show you how to go about it, but you got to give God some time. So God is saying, I'll show you what to do, but you got to make time to hear from God. You know, he says in the book of John chapter 16, verse 13, he said, when he, the Holy Spirit of truth has come, Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. The Holy Ghost lives in you as a child of God. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. He is obligated to lead you. He is obligated to guide you. He's obligated to direct your steps. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he, he delights in his way. And also it says in uh, John 16, 13, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of himself, which means speak on his own authority, and whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And at the end, it says, and he will show you things to come. So he's going to show you what to do. And thou shall anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. So God says, I'll show you the guy. Just hang with me. Lord, have mercy. Some of the ladies grabbed that word and ran with it. I'll show you the man. <laughs> I'll show you the one who's supposed to be your husband. Lord have mercy. You can't fool God, right? Now watch this, verse 4. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake and came to Bethlehem. 
and the elders of the town, I love this right here, and the elders of the town trembled. They trembled at his coming and said, Comest thou peaceably. They thought, they, they, they thought to themselves, they thought to themselves, Samuel's coming with bad news. He's coming to rebuke somebody. At least they had fear. We live in a generation where people hardly fear men of God today. They think you and them are company. Lord help us, Jesus. Now watch this. Verse 5. And Samuel said, Peaceably I am come. He said, I'm come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. This was a huge deal. I mean, Samuel was a famous prophet. Everybody, the whole of Israel and Judah knew who Samuel was. He was known from one end of the country to the other. So it wasn't like it, it wasn't like Samuel could just hide and get away with it. No, everyone knew who this man was. He was famous. He was popular. Now, you're listening to me, and at this time, my gosh, his popularity was at an all-time high because he was a man of God. Nothing he said fell to the ground. Now, watch this. And it came to pass, when they were come, that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. Now, now you've got to understand what's happening. Jesse sanctified his sons. He did what Samuel told him to do. Not all the way you're about to find out. And as the eldest came before Samuel, Samuel's looking at Eliab. Eliab is tall, almost like, like the way King Saul was. When God sent Samuel to anoint King Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 9 and 10, King Saul was a head taller than all the people. He was a tall man. So Samuel automatically assumed in his mind, we all make these mistakes as men and women of God. Every one of us are guilty of it. Samuel looked from the way, he saw, the way uh, Eliab looked on the outside, and he made the mistake. He thought, well, I guess God's going to do it the exact way he did it the last time. Not so. God changes the way he does things. His principles doesn't change, but his methods do. So Samuel was thinking, well, this has got to be the one God's going to show. He's the elder son. He's got to be the man. And Samuel made the mistake and said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. Samuel was about to anoint the wrong guy. Lord, have mercy. I feel like the Holy Ghost talking to some women. <laughs> I'm messing with y'all. But anyway, Samuel was about to anoint the wrong guy. Some of you probably about to make a mistake. You better listen. Listen to the Holy Ghost. So, Samuel was about to anoint the wrong one, and verse 7, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. I mean, Eliab had the look. He had the protocol down. He knew when to twist, when to turn, how to sit, how to act in front of important people, when to cross his legs, when to uncross it. Come on, somebody. God says, Sammy, don't let none of that fool you, son. He ain't the one. He said, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man sees, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. You can't fool God. God knows exactly who folk are. You're listening to me. That's why I love walking with God. I can't tell you how much times me and Pastor Amy started to trust the wrong people and the Holy Spirit pulled the covers off them when we were seeking God in prayer and say, you can't trust that one. You can't trust that one. Come on, somebody. Simon, we all make that mistake. Because some people know how to act, and they're very deceptive and very conniving, and they can act so humble that you think you can trust them, but they are cutthroat. God said, no, Eliab ain't the one. Next, then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel, and he said, neither. Boy, Samuel's tuning in now. <laughs> Samuel said, I, uh, uh, I, I ain't pulling the trigger on this one. I'm waiting to hear from God on this. And Samuel, he's a man just like we are, but he was anointed. He was a real prophet of God, and he almost missed God, but he tuned, he, he's, he's tuned in now. Samuel said, I ain't going down that street. I'm letting the Holy Ghost, I'm letting the Lord tell me who's the, who, who the next king is. Then, then Jesse made Shammah to pass by, 
And he said, Neither had the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Is this all your children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. He's just a little boy. There's no way it could be him. Ha, ha, ha. Jesse messed up on this one. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. Glory to God. I'm talking, I, listen, I believe the Holy Ghost talking to somebody. You are handpicked by God. Your spot is preserved. You can't know Eliab, Abinadab, or Shammah. Take your place. God's got your seat preserved. Samuel said, send and fetch him. Samuel said, send and fetch him. We will not sit down until he comes. Oh, the Holy Ghost waiting on you. Your spot, your seat is preserved. God's fighting for you. David is on the backside of the desert. David don't even know what's going on. And God's right there fighting for him. God said, no, Samuel, that ain't the one, that ain't the one. This spot is preserved for David. Glory to God, your spot is preserved. Can't nobody have your spot. Watch this. And he sent and brought him in. And now he was ready and with all of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, glory to God, I love it. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Man, ain't nothing like when God speaks on your behalf. I said it ain't nothing like when God speaks on your behalf. Glory to God. I remember the prophetess in the Bahamas, Sister Lily Hill. I can't forget these people. I remember when the Holy Ghost sent her to my house to pray for me and to anoint me. I was young and just had surrendered my life to Christ and figuring out the call of God. That woman of God came and anointed me. She said, God chose you, son. Lord, help us, Jesus. I remember the old prophet Miller back in the Bahamas. Many of the people in the town where I came from, everybody knew who prophet Miller was. That man laid his hands on me and blessed my life. He said, son, God said, you'll go, you'll do twice as much as what I accomplished. He said, God said, all the blessing that was on me is coming on your life. I can't forget those things. You can't fool God. There was no YouTube. There was no social media. And those people recognized the hand of God. My pastor, Reverend Lawrence Pender, anointed me. He said, son, God showed me the vision is great. And God will explain it to you. God's hand is on your life, son. Apostle Carolyn Cooper, my mentor, prophesied the call of God on my life. Apostle Leon Wallace, Bishop Godfrey Williams, Pastor Rudolph Roberts. Are you listening to me? Great men and women of God. Mother Daphne down there. I believe she's in Bimini now. I can't forget those people. My own mom and dad, they saw the call of God on my life. They saw the hand of God on my life. Some of my brothers and sisters, they saw the call of God. Thank God. You can't fool God. But I'm here to tell someone your sport is preserved. You have been handpicked. You've been handpicked by God. He is working in your life. Listen to this. Verse 13. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I feel the anointing. Come on, someone just lift your hands to heaven. I feel the anointing of God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hands up. I'm about to read the other verse, but let's sing that. Hands up and hearts open wide as the sky. We lift you high. We lift you high. Sing it, church. And hands up and hearts open. Open wide as we cry. 
Lord, we lift your name high. Listen to this verse. Listen here. Stay right in that flow. Listen to this. I love this. Then Samuel took the horn of oil. Glory to God. He took the horn of oil. So the Bible says, then Samuel took the horn of oil. He took that horn that was loaded with oil. And what did he do? He poured it. David bent down before Samuel. And Samuel poured the oil on his head. Listen to this. Then Samuel took the horn. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost is calling somebody. He's choosing somebody here. God's handpicking someone this morning. Listen to this. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forth forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. You can't fool the Holy Ghost. The oil refused to flow until David showed up. Once David showed up, the oil started flowing and Samuel took the horn of oil and he poured it on there. He poured it on David's head. Glory to God. Someone lift your hands to heaven. Hands up. Hands up and hearts open wide as the sky. We lift you high. Come on, church. We lift you high. Hands up. Listen, I want to pray with you. Come on, lift your hands up. You know the Holy Ghost is calling you. You know he is anointing you. You know he is choosing you. You are chosen. You, God, I say God chose you. You have been handpicked by the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, me and Pastor Amy, we join our faith with these young men and young women, older men and older women who you have chosen. Your hands is on their lives. You've handpicked them. God, let the Holy Spirit confirm the call. Let that anointing and the fire of the Holy Ghost come upon them right now. Let, wherever they are, let their body be filled with your presence, filled with the anointing, filled with the Holy Ghost. Let the atmosphere in their room shift right now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. I'm asking 300 of you who have never partnered with this ministry or never done something significant. And you know this ministry has been a blessing to millions of you around the world. I'm asking 300 people to make a commitment for the next 12 months to stand with this ministry. And I'm asking you to do something significant to help us continue to preach this gospel around the world. We want to begin three nights of miracles in a few months, but we cannot accomplish this by ourselves. We need you to stand with us financially. We need you to make a commitment for the next 12 months to do something significant. And people, this is not a joke. This is not a game. I'm very serious about this. If you know you are able to do it and you can make that commitment for the next 12 months, I want you to do something significant for the next 12 months to help us do what God is calling us to do. You know me and Pastor Amy, we take these things very serious. To give in this offering, you can visit us online at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry app. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. The ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry Cash App account. The ministry Cash App address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. 
You can also give through the ministry Venmo account. The ministry Venmo account is at Sean Pinda Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also give by mailing your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. Listen, Main Pastor Amy, we love all of you. We appreciate you. And a tremendous, a huge thank you to our, to our partners who make this broadcast possible to help us take this gospel around the world. We love all of you. Join us again on tomorrow morning for another morning prayer broadcast. God bless you.